Greetings and welcome. Uh, Clyde Branson here. Uh, as uh, you probably know, a few of you have been following my vlogs. Um, some of you uh, obviously may be new to it. And of course, um, this is more or less intended for, I suppose, the beginner or somebody who really wants to know a little bit more about waggler fishing. Um, I'll tell you a little bit of history about myself. Um, uh, I started uh, when I was a young lad um, fishing uh, on the rivers. And um, I remember, oh, I must have only been a teenager, 13, 14, and uh, we used to have little regular uh, matches on the River Taff in, um, in South Wales. And what basically happened, uh, I remember, you know, we used to, we were brought up fishing, if you like, uh, little chubber floats and little uh, uh, stick floats. And sometimes we'd actually attach it to the bottom and uh, we call it like a trotter, you know, a trotter float. So that was our closest thing that we ever fished, you know, fishing a waggler. Now, obviously, when you're young and, uh, you know, you're, you're full of uh, uh, interest, you know, you're, you're inquisitive, you want to find out, you know, everything about fishing. Anyway, um, I, ne I never forget, uh, it was an old um, uh, friend, uh, well, I say an old friend, uh, I made friends with him later on in life, it was Kevin Ashurst, and uh, uh, he used to come down on the River Taff. Um, I, I was told that he used to deliver baits, you know, maggots around the country, and then sometimes he would plan it so that he could actually go fishing. And anyway, uh, he used to come, you know, I wouldn't say on a regular basis, but I, I saw him now and again. But also uh, a few of the Midland lads, um, uh, Trollmans, I think their names was, and um, but uh, they were bloody good anglers. I mean, they, they come down because the fishing was quite good, fantastic on the river, full of roach. Anyway, yeah, the, the main thing was um, uh, how I first come about the waggler was when I was actually, um, I suppose, fishing a, a competition, and uh, all of a sudden I, I, uh, I had a Midland, uh, one of these lads above me. Um, now, I was only a junior at the time, remember this, and uh, of course, I was a bit clueless, really. <laughs> and anyway, um, coming down, uh, in front of me, my swim, I seen this float. Unlike the floats that we use, and I'm looking at it now, and it, it sort of went past me. Next thing, it went under. And I glanced down, and I could see this float and a fish on the end of it. He'd obviously caught it from my swim. And uh, he was fishing a waggler close in. Now, it was unbelievable. Now, I didn't know, but he'd been doing this all match. And um, obviously, because of the nature of the waggler, when you hook a fish, um, it sinks under the water. And like a stick float or a, or a chubber or a bolly, you know, where it would, it would stay on top of the water mainly, um, these wagglers would be submerged and, of course, the fish would be recovered. And I thought, blimey, what's that? Anyway, it was a waggler. It was a new invention as far as we were concerned, uh, and I think it was because I, I believe the waggler, um, the peacock uh, quill, didn't really come into uh, you know into consideration till about the fifties anyway, and and the, this of course I was in the sixties then when uh, when we fishing this match. Anyway, as uh, time progressed, um, I obviously learned more about the uh, fish and the waggler. And we ended up uh, basically fishing um, a, 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 our local rope park lake, um, which was uh, a big lake. And um, we waggle, a waggler was the way to fish it, to be honest. Um, although, uh, you know, I suppose before we started fishing it, I, I'm not sure how the regulars used to fish it. But, um, but my guess was it was the first time the waggler got introduced, um, you know, for, properly in, in our match fishing and as I said I was just a teenager at the time um, and I was lucky enough uh, you know that we as I said we had a pretty good venue and it, um, it suited the waggler because you, you know you'd have to sort of cast out a fair while you know fair bit to catch, uh, catch fish um, and um, anyway there was a there was a bunch of us at the time and um, they were all good at, we were all on par with each other we were all pretty good at it there was a uh, a chap named Richard Baton. Now Richie went on to become uh, a bronze medalist in the World Championships later on in life. Uh, Ken Ornsey was uh, phenomenal, he was quite good at it. An old friend of mine, Clive Roberts, was pretty good. There was a Richie Candy and of course myself. And you know, Wagler really was our forte, you know, that's how we learnt 
our fishing, you know, when we, when we were young. And of course, uh, we had to learn all the different um, types of waggler fishing. And I suppose uh, it wasn't until 1981 when the Welsh team entered the, uh, the World Championships that we, um, that we used the waggler on a professional level, you know, international level. And, um, well, combined with the stick load, uh, in 1981, the Welsh team actually uh, got a bronze medal, you know, fishing, fishing the wagglers and the stick loads. Um, if you can hear some pigeons, by the way, uh, I leave my door open <laughs> in my apartment and they come in. They've actually laid a couple of eggs under the bloody soap. I don't know what to do about it. Whether to leave them there or not. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> anyway, uh, let me carry on. Yeah, so as I was saying, uh, it was Roth Park Lake that we learned our Wagner fishing and, um, you know, uh, and in later years when we did fish, as I said, the international matches, we were uh, we were pretty good by then, I think, um, because uh, leading up to the the World Championships on the Warwickshire Raven at Ludington, uh, obviously we've been fishing a Wagner quite a lot on our local rivers, you know, the Taff, um, the Wye. Uh, River Esk, you know, and uh, so you know we 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 were pretty proficient at it by then. Um, uh, it wasn't until uh, a couple of years later, in 1986, that um, I actually uh, have a silver medal in the World Championships, and that was on a canal. Um, again, uh, I used a waggler. It was on a winder uh, at the time. We didn't even consider that as a technique, as a method. On the, on the days but um, what happened was that uh, you know somebody uh, had caught one of the Scottish lads had caught a, uh, a chub on the waggler and I had um, I didn't have, have one set up but I had them in on winders and so I quickly got into my bag halfway to the match got it out and uh, anyway this is, you know it's history now but I, I managed to come second and uh, if I'd done it earlier I probably could have won it uh, but even so, the following year, uh, I went on and um, I won the World Championships using traditional Wagler method. Um, and that was on, uh, in Portugal, on the river uh, in Coimbra. Um, you can always have a look at that on my autobiography. I've, I've, uh, I've actually made a, you know, a vlog about that anyway. So you can, you know, if you want to pop over and have a look at that, it tells you more. Anyway, 1989, I mean, we were the Welsh team, uh, where we actually won the gold a medal. We won the World Championships all using the Wagler, a traditional Wagler style. Again, you know, we beat uh, Italy, England, you know, we beat them all. So, you know, it was great. Um, and that was the year that Richie also uh, had a bronze medal, again, using the Wagler. Um, I was uh, I 23 pound on the second day. I was uh, second best weight on the second day. I didn't finish the first day. But, um, but I was there, you know, helping the lads. And anyway, again, that's in my autobiography. Um, so I'll just give you a little, little indication why the waggler is uh, my favourite method and my favourite float. And, um, you know, as I said, uh, over the years, I've had to learn and I have learned different methods, different techniques. And um, obviously on this video, on this vlog, I'll uh, go through a few of them. So hopefully, as I said, you know, a couple of the... Uh, People who never fished a waggler, or, or even people who have fished a waggler, might pick up a few tips, you know. Um, anyway, uh, it, after uh, winning the World Championships, of course, um, uh, we went on and, you know, fished the local domestic matches. We went to Ireland, you know, pretty successful in Ireland, picked up a few, uh, a couple of quid there. Um, uh, waters closer back home, I used to use the Waggler quite a bit, was on the Huntsville. Um, I was second in the Huntsville Championships once, uh, uh, one year. Uh, but I, I I was always in the money, always in the frame, winning my sections. You know, it, it was only a, a bream weight you know, on, the, on the feeder that would beat me. So, you know, that was quite good. Um, another one was Paul Reservoir, And I, I actually proved a point. Uh, we fished um, a soup league down there and... Uh, um, I was next drawn next to a, a, one of the local lads who was a pretty pretty keen angler, and he, he fished the feeder, and I fished a waggler. Now, obviously, it was a quite deep uh, uh, section we were fishing, and I started to, um, uh, you know, put knobs of ground bait and fish the waggler up in the water, and uh, and I proved that a waggler can beat the feeder. <laughs> well, at, at that stage, I was, uh, you know, catching skimmers. 
and, uh, and also in a few sections as well where we fished on there and that was great you know um and uh, of course uh, you know lo lately i've been fishing away like, quite a lot against the feeder boys down in our local water on the um uh port Alba reservoir yeah, uh, my last match had 53 pound a roach all on a waggler up in the water in 20 foot of water. So you can see, you know, and the waggler is very uh, versatile. You can use it many, many methods, um, in many venues, I should say. And, uh, you know, as I said, different methods, which I'll, I'll try and go through now. Um, so, you know, give you a little bit of an insight. Um, I've had other successes with the waggler. In fact, uh, I know. No bloodworm, for example, is synonymous to uh, to the pole. But I actually won a um, uh, an international uh, between France and Blanc Park Lake using bloodworm on a waggler. So there you are. This goes to show you. you know. Um, funny enough, that was the same weekend I won. I, I won the uh, Sundridge Pole Championships uh, down on the Regent's Canal. But that was on a pole, of course. That one with a waggler. But that's that's another that's another vlog. That one. <laughs> um, I remember another time I fished the um, uh, a dragon waggler. Now that's a technique I'm, I'm actually going to show you, uh, or I'll go through shortly. Um, fishing in, uh, I think it was about 12, 14 foot of water, and I was dragging on at um, 17 foot, 18 foot. So I was basically dragging on heavy, uh, and I won a, a nice match on River Seven. Um, uh, uh, I think it was it was called the Long Hole. Um, peg and I, I don't think anyone's up to then had, had won off it it was it was notorious because it was deep and it was long but I uh, yeah I managed to win a match uh, 21 pound and the following week I, I used the same method a dragon waggler and that was um uh, on Bristol Haven I had 23 pound a roach and um uh, the local lad Kevin Dix actually won that match he also used a waggler but he, he caught it differently he caught this on the chub up in the water so uh, yeah, so as I say, the, it's been very good to me, the Wagner, over the years. Um, as I said, I, uh, I, I've i actually used it uh, quite a lot on, on the Wallace Raven when I fish up there a lot. I mean, I, I know some pegs you go and you're they're out and out, you know, pole pegs and that, but I always opt for the feeder, uh, you know, uh, always opt for the Wagner because, uh, as I said, my favourite method. Uh, and I got, I got techniques of casting and um, there's little things, you know, that you need to know really you know to get the best out of, out of, out of waggler fishing um, as I say and uh, you know I've won a few sections I've won a, I've won a match or two as well using it on the Wild Raven at Evesham and uh, yeah so as I say I'm pretty well uh, versed and um, you know I've got some techniques so uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to go through all the different types of waggler's with you and I'll also show you different methods we can use and uh, hopefully you can learn a little bit okay yeah, so, um, before I uh, go into the methods and things like that, uh, what I'd like to do is just uh, give you a little rundown, uh, you know, obviously on the Wagner and um, and how I suppose it, it was introduced into our modern day of fishing. Um, funny enough, I've got, I got a, a book here, uh, it's called The Angler's News, and it's a 1951 and I've been going through it, uh, and there, there's not any mentions at all about wagglers fishing. You know, it's uh, so it must be in the, quite a reasonable uh, new method in a sense, um, because uh, you know, without doubt, it's probably uh, the most used um, float in the, in in uh, most people's tackle box. I would say, probably accounting uh, now for more fish caught in in a season than any other method I, I suppose you know um, uh, the waggler was first developed uh, by modern day uh, fishing quite late really I suppose um, you, as I said uh, probably in the 50s you know looking at the book there I can see some mentions about uh, the waggler but uh, who first discovered and developed the method is, is debatable because um, uh, some historians, you know, the records show that uh, there was um, an antenna type of float being used in Holland uh, on the Great Canals back in the 1990s. So, um, although, you know, uh, many great names in the past have been linked, you know, to this modern development. And um, I think Benny Ashers, Billy Lane, Johnny Moult, 
Johnny Tolson, you know, just to mention a few. Um, uh, you know, but the grandfather of all match anglers, uh, a chap named uh, J. H. R. Baisley, uh, he won two national championships in 1909 and 1927. Um, and uh, uh, what I gather, he was using bottom end only floats then. So, you know. Um, anyway, the Waggler uh, was once called the Waddle Float, W A D D L E D, Waddled Float. Uh, and the story goes uh, that as the float uh, was retrieved through the water, uh, it, it waddled. <laughs> so, um, hence, you know, the name, you know, um, caught on, I suppose. Um, Although, uh, you know, most waggler floats uh, really uh, derive from the peacock quill, um, there, uh, there are accounts of um, wagglers, you know, with the old crow quill, reverse crow quill as a waggler. Um, some use, um, you know, uh, uh, some sort of reed floats as well, you know, so, um, you know, uh, other, other things like uh, porcupine uh, quills, uh, condor quills and and celluloid celluloid sort of quills were made um you know i suppose early on in in, in the sort of 50s but as i said it wasn't until after the, the second world war when peacock quills actually were uh, imported into the country and now of course these days uh wagners are, uh, are produced you know with high-tech precision you know just uh, with um, clear plastic uh, also graded uh, peacock, um, Sikandas reed is another one, uh, nylon and tapered balsas, you know, all these uh, uh, combinations can make up, um, you know, uh, a waggler. And um, hopefully, as I said, I, I'll, I'll go through a lot of them now in, in this in this vlog. Um, as I said, uh, waggler floats, uh, they do come in uh, various lengths and they attach mainly to the, the bottom, you know, uh, of the float. So I'll just show you, and uh, that's a body float, which I'll be talking about later. But as I said, they're all basically attached to the end. Um, usually they're locked with split shot, and that helps to balance the float. Uh, most wagglers, you shot it by, as I say, putting a bulk of the weight underneath the uh, uh, the float to give it balance, to give it that um, uh, casting durability. Because um, uh, the more weight you have down, the, the less chance you've got of casting at, at long distances. Anyway, uh, as I said, uh, finding uh, the, the type of waggler for different methods and different techniques, again, hopefully I'll show you, you know, in this vlog. And also I'll be showing you um, various methods and techniques. So, anyway. Yeah, so, um, as I mentioned, uh, uh, when you set up wagglers mainly, uh, um, it's always a good idea to get a, a decent rod and a decent reel. Um, my favourite length of rod is a 13 foot, um, and I've used many rods over the years, uh, usually with a soft tip action, you know, for casting. Um, I mean, I, I do recommend a couple of rods. Uh, I used to use the Normark Microlite, which was one of the better rods. Um, out on the market. Um, they were dated then. Uh, then um, Drennan brought out the uh, Acrylite uh, rod, which is very, very good. And now these days I use a Cadence and um, I find them excellent, you know, 13 foot, 14 foot. Anything longer, you can't quite get the right balance, I don't think, you know. And um, don't forget that because the float is so versatile and the way you attach it, as I said, on the line, locking it um, on the bottom with the shots, um, you know, it allows it to, to uh, um, if you like, to slide up the line and you can adjust the float. Um, and also sliders, uh, sliding wagglers, which I'll, again, be talking about uh, in, in the, the, the actual um, vlog. I just uh, just showed you a couple of reels. Um, this is the open face and cadence, and then one of my uh, favourites are the uh, closed face reels. And it's very important that you get the right balance of reel to the right rod when you're fishing wag this because you want it to be quite light. Um, and uh, I developed a technique 
um, which uh, I, I haven't seen anyone else do it. Uh, there may be other anglers doing it, I don't know. But the general rule of thumb is, you know, when you when you get your rod, you, you sort of um, look to a, a, um, a target in the distance, usually a tree or something, and, uh, you know, or some sort of marking on the opposite bank or the river. And what you do, you cast it uh, uh, by... Um, yeah, I'll demonstrate. Basically, what you do, you take the bail arm off, you hold the line then, which is with your index finger, and as you cast, obviously, you cast out to that um, area that you, you intend to fish, and just before hitting the water, you just feather it by tapping the line uh, so that then uh, all the shots will uh, uh, go forward and that'll save any tangles. Um, and I find, um, you know, uh, uh, it, you know, a nice light, um, uh, close face, open face reel is best. Uh, that's a cadence, by the way. But my favourite, as I said, is the uh, close face abus, and this one is press button. And the reason I use this uh, more than that, the other is because uh, with an open face, you tend to, you know, it's a bit sort of clumsy because you got to, you know, use your two hands and cast it. Where with a, a single press button. Release, releases the line, and it's easier to cast it. So I can cast with one hand. So basically, what, what I do, I have the the rod and the uh, the reel in my hand, and and I sort of, uh, you know, I'll hook the maggot like that, and I don't need to to go, you know, like most people do, up and cast out like that. Uh, what I do, I just ten, tend to uh, hook the bait with one hand, and I click the button. I go like that, like that. And then, and I cast, still holding um, the bait in my hand, and I cast it, and, and I can cast it right out. And uh, as I say, you just fed the line before it hits. By doing it that way, I speed up my motion. And as you know, with, with uh, mass fishing, sometimes it's all about um, you know time and motion, and uh, and I find I can do that rather quickly. Um, you know, and that's, that's how I manage to outfish uh, and outspeed a lot of other anglers. So. Uh, <clears throat> I'll just show you that uh, before we begin. Yeah, so uh, the first um, method, or I should say, the first um, float in in my uh, in my case, I suppose, is the straight peacock waggler. Um, if I tell you a little bit of history about the peacock waggler, because um, it um, it's it, uh, the peacock is actually from the bird, you know, uh, the peacock bird, and it originates from India. Uh, it was first important imported into the country just after the Second World War, you know, and um, as it, it became very well uh, uh, known and uh, used um, on, on the fishing fraternity uh, when people started using uh, the waglet. Now, the quills, they actually come in lengths of like up to 30 inches long. Um, I've got a couple here, I don't know if you see. <laughs> quite long ones, which are taking the feathers off, of course. Um, need to sand them down and uh, obviously need to put uh, um, inserts or if you if it's a straight peacock then obviously you just uh, round it, the edge off and it needs to be varnished and coloured and also you know put put the base in obviously where your line uh, goes through the uh, uh, the spigot so I'll show you about that in a minute anyway uh, as I said the um, it's a very versatile uh, you know material to use you know you can actually cut it and uh, to any size you want and um, and obviously different thicknesses thinner ends and you've got thicker ends so you know it depends on the type of uh, you know type of waggler or type of peacock you know that you want to use I mean obviously most um, peacocks you know you can already buy you know already uh, if you like I mean these are ones I make myself but you can actually buy them from the shops and um, you know and they're quite cheap really you know I think most uh, most anglers, so you know, natural, natural anglers, or even commercial anglers, have got you know some form of waggler in the in a um, in the in the box. Anyway, now the fish in the straight waggler, um, peacock waggler, is a great tool um, for uh, various methods. And one particular method is, uh, as I mentioned, is dragging the bottom um, of, the, of the lake or, or the or the river. Um, uh, by dragging, uh, what it means is that you, uh, your spit shots are laying on the riverbed or the lake bed and it's slowing the toe 
of the uh, of the float going down going down stream and um, depends how you shot it up depends on how slow you can present the bait um, I've actually got a diagram and I'll show you so you can see that <clears throat> but basically if you've got the flow going one way um, you obviously you uh, go well over depth you know you're talking a couple of feet over depth making sure the shots actually drag along the bottom and um, obviously uh, as you're probably well aware you may have seen on, on uh, videos before the, the top of the surface of the water is always running faster than the bottom but even so this helps to drag uh, the bait on the bottom and it slows it up completely now the secret is of course with a straight peacock uh, uh, quill is to make sure it's proud okay I think that might be the wrong way around there I'm not sure but um, yeah making sure it's proud so in other words making sure that uh, you've got plenty of float uh, above the surface because the idea is it goes along the water it bobs up and down so it's slightly dragging and then obviously the buoyancy of the float will pull it um, so the bait if you like just eases off the bottom and it's slowing up so you're getting a bobbing effect you know going down going down and when it goes under stays under that's more or less a fish on the end unless you, you dragged on a snag but it, again you need a pretty clear bottom to do it as I say that method uh, has actually won me you know some some big money and some uh, some competition so that is um, that's just one method um, right I'll come on to another method in a minute yeah and before I actually come on to uh, some more methods in a minute um, just want to uh, um, give you my uh, uh, example of how I actually fish the waggler um, quite often a lot of anglers fish downstream with a waggler obviously to eliminate the bow in the line now most waggler fishing on still water is usually done by sinking the line and that, that's quite simple because obviously what you do you cast over to the area that you're fishing making sure that you're belly in the line now obviously you overcast that distance you put your rod under the water and you retrieve it or, or a couple of quick uh, lifts will help to sink the line of course um, another way of helping to sink the line is a little bit of a uh, washing up liquid I use a uh, fairy <laughs> little, little drops of fairy on the on the on the line and that will basically uh, help the line to sink and that will sink quite quickly but there are occasions where you want the line to float and that's sometimes usually more on on running water than on still water although I sometimes I will use floating line on uh, still water but that's really when the conditions are perfect um, you know you want to sort of semi sunk um, but as you know because obviously because you attach the waggler uh, always to the bottom end of the float so that when it uh, goes under the water of course you got line coming obviously under the surface you know and the, if, if you can keep most of the, um, the line under the water uh, then that's that's the ideal situation on still water uh, and there's a couple of other um, things you've got to bear in mind if you do sink the line is that sometimes if you've got a little bit of a toe you start to get a bow in the line now if that happens um, I don't worry too much because if you just feather some line out from the reel okay the float will still stay in the same position but you get a, you will get a little bow in the line so instead of the, the float coming out of position you know you just let this little slight bow develop under the water and when you get a bite you strike into the bow so the bow of you know the under the water of that line acts as a buffer uh, again you know so what you do is you, you strike upwards and that as I said will you know will hook the fish um, you can go to the side of course um, you know on the same uh, same line as the as the bow um, uh, and that's just this is sufficient but anyway that's uh, that's um, I thought I'd just bring that in because that is important now when it comes to fishing on rivers then again sometimes you want the line to, f to float because you can mend the line behind the float because if you can imagine if you're fishing a waggler sort of out in front of you or, or downstream of you then it's naturally a bow is going to sort of uh, you know the line is going to create a bow so by floating a line you can actually lift it 
mend the line so it, it doesn't come out of position as it's traveling down the water. Of course, again, it all determines if you've got wind and if you've got a downstream wind, then you're better off trying to sink the line. But all this comes through experience, I think. And um, uh, as I say, uh, but most of the times I will try and uh, keep the line above the water. So it means I can... Uh, now, the question is also, how do I fish a waggler on a river when it's flowing down? Well, a lot of, as I said, a lot of anglers will actually um, concentrate on feeding downstream. They'll feed downstream and cast their float downstream, which in a way is a very good idea because, um, you know, you can actually um, mend the line uh, without it creating that much of a bowl. Um, although there are methods where you, you spray in the bait across the water or making two swims, if you like, you have your main attack in the middle. And uh, if you miss a bite, obviously you pull it, it comes closer in and you still let it run down, you know, the stream because uh, you don't want to waste time by reeling in all the time. You want to be able to, so you need these two swims going, sometimes even three swims going. And you, the waggler can cover the whole um uh, area of, 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 of your trots down down the, the stream so uh, that's another little tip now personally uh, I like to take the advantage of the full length of my swim now the only problem by you know f uh, feeding downstream and fishing downstream is especially in matches that you're eliminating your space of your, of your water so you know the fish you know, will will tend to be more downstream and more into the other angler's peg. Unless, of course, you're trying to draw fish up from that peg, which, again, that, you know, that's another method that uh, that you can do. Because uh, quite often, um, if the angler below you is catching, then you simply you know, have to start feeding downstream and, and gradually bring the fish upstream. But personally, I always fish my wagglers out in front of me. I start out in front of me and I feed slightly upstream. And the idea is, is that I get the full benefit then of the whole of the, of the swim. So basically, as you can imagine, I'm casting out, feeding upstream, letting it settle, and this is going down, and I can mend the line as it's going downstream, so I am getting the full benefit. Now, the only problem is, of course, if the angler's pretty good above you, then he might feed downstream to take your fish off you. So it's one of them things that you've always got to be aware of, you know, uh, as I said, whether it's, uh, uh, depends on who, who's fishing next to, you know, and uh, their ability. But these are little tricks and little tips that you will pick up, you know, as obviously as you go along. Now, uh, in case uh, you miss all this video, by the way, uh, I've actually got a website called uh, www.goldmedalfloats.co.uk and on that website uh, I've got all the diagrams and all the instructions on how to fish wagner so uh, if you've got a minute after this perhaps you can pop along and have a look and you can see for yourself uh, at your own leisure but I'm going to show you some diagrams now of some shot in patterns that I use um, again depending on, on the type of fish I'm fishing for and the type of method I'm using um, again, determines, if you like, the shotting patterns.